this is what the Russian world, or the Russian peace, as they called it, looks like. I am Zarina Zabrisky and I am talking to you. I'm here with John Sweeney, the legend of modern journalism. And John is going to tell us some stories about Ukraine and also the killer in the Kremlin. I am, uh, but first of all, we're going up in that thing. Here we are with John Sweeney in Kiev on the Ferris wheel. Hello, John. Hi. I feel like a scene in The Third Man. And at some point, Serena, you're going to tell me about democracy and cuckoo clocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with the breakdown on the weapons and uh, our Western allies and partners helping Ukraine and the overall strategy, kind of summing it up for the past year, for the anniversary of the uh, full-scale invasion, John. Yeah, so what's happened is that um, just the other day there was a massive conference of NATO and the American base in Germany at Ramstein. And they didn't give what the Ukrainians wanted. They wanted, for example, 300 main battle tanks so they can get out of the trench warfare, which they're stuck in, which the Russians like, because they, the Russians have got, remember, Russia's got a population three times as big as Ukraine. So trench warfare suits the Russians, and at the moment, Vladimir Putin and his killing machine are bleeding Ukraine dry. The reason the Ukrainians want these main battle tanks, these big tanks, is that they can then get out of the trenches and they can move, and a war of movement helps the Ukrainians. They asked for 300, and the last time I looked, they've actually been promised 71, and maybe there's talk of 140 in total. That's less than half what the Ukrainians want. So why are the Western allies, the Americans and the Germans, being so slow? And the reason is, I think, is that they are frightened of what happens to Russia if Ukraine wins the war. In particular, Ukraine kicks Russia out of Crimea. And Vladimir Putin is humiliated, so crushed, that someone inside the Kremlin kills him. By the way, I don't think um, uh, he'll be shot. I think he'll have some kind of surgery and doesn't come round. Or if he gets into a plane, it might fall out of the sky. It will be that kind of demise. Poison might be on the list. Um, uh, he could fall um, suddenly ill. He is, after all, 70. And no one will ever know that actually he was poisoned. That's treason does never prosper. If it prosper, none they call it treason. So the Americans, in particular, are worried about Russia's nuclear arsenal. It's the biggest in the world. And they're afraid that what happens after Putin is not that he'll be replaced by a nice liberal Democrat. He'll be replaced by chaos. And the particular American neurosis is, is that they will end up doing what they did to Iraq, to Russia. You decapitate the tyrant, you get rid of Saddam, and you have not somewhere which is pro-American, but you have actually somewhere which is a chaotic mess with everybody fighting everybody. The problem is Iraq didn't have 2,000 nuclear warheads and Russia does. So that's the thing they're most worried about. So it feels like, and this is what we hear from senior Ukrainian politicians, that the Americans are deliberately dribbling military aid to Ukraine, not giving it in a, um, a sufficient or timely fashion because they don't want to move things so fast. They want to keep Putin in play. Is there a deadline for this? Yes. And you know what? It's the American election. 
which isn't happening in 23, it's happening in 24. And so one version of this is that the Americans come up with the goods and the Ukrainians use them. And it looks really good for the sitting president, Joe Biden. And then the next day um, he gets elected and Putin falls. Terrific. That is what some people say is the American plan. The problem is that costs the Ukrainians a tide of blood. Right, and uh, by the way, Natalia Huminyuk, the press officer for the command uh, center south, confirmed exactly the same regarding the tanks. This is the reason why Ukrainians are so hot for the tanks, because of the um, numbers uh, that the Russians have, and they need them to get out of the trench, uh, trenches. John, uh, let's talk about the next Rammstein meeting and the aircraft issue with the little dance that everybody's doing. First say no, then maybe, and the whole courtship. What do you think about that? Well, it's the same game, isn't it? What's happening is that it's a kind of stately gavotte around the carnage. Um, the killing continues, it's getting worse, but the Western strategy is not to provide the heavy metal, or in this case the, um, the fighter jets, needed to, to make Ukrainian skies safe. Why on earth not? Because actually the jets will be used to knock out uh, Russian jets that are used to, um, um, to bomb Ukraine, and most of the time that's civilian targets. So why not? And again you come back to the same point, which is that the West are afraid of what happens after Putin. And this fear is governing policy. Um, and the reason I think this is wrong is because Putin is an extraordinary danger to the West. I believe, as does the American intelligence community, that, um, that Putin helped Donald Trump into the White House. And I believe that it's very likely that Russian dark money, i.e. money from the Russian uh, secret state, helped pay for Brexit. Um, and they did other things like, for example, pushing, um, um, pushing stuff, um, information, cyber war, um, in favour of Brexit. So that you've got two massive events in the West, an election of a president favourable to the Kremlin and um, Britain leaving the European Union, a disaster for Britain economically, but also a major Kremlin go goal because of Britain without Europe, a U European Union without Europe, uh, without Britain. A European Union without Britain is a much weaker European Union. So, the idea that it's a good idea to keep Putin in power because of what happens in the future seems foolish, bearing in mind of what Putin has done. He has launched a series of wars, the first against Chechnya, then against Ukraine, then Syria, and now the second, the big one in Ukraine. He's killed countless people who opposed him back in Russia, and he has manipulated things so that he got um, a friendly American president into the White House and he got Britain, I believe, well, helped get Britain out of the European Union. He is dangerous to the West and therefore I feel we should just get rid of this monster as quickly as possible. Now, is there a problem with Russia's future? You bet. But is it right for us to say we shouldn't help our Ukrainian friends because we're afraid of that Russian future? I don't think so. I just think we should get do the job we have to do, which is stand up for our values, stand up for civilization, for common human decency, and, and give the Ukrainians the weapons they need to end this brutal and evil war. 
I can't agree more with you, John, because as you know, I also did research and I have a lot of evidence showing that Trump indeed was installed as a puppet by Putin and has been cult being cultivated for about 30 years. Uh, and also um, the Russian government has been meddling not just in Brexit, but in all the other so-called referendums. And that now includes the referendums in Ukraine. That's just what they do. So keeping the same government in place just because of the fear of having something worse hasn't been working really well, has it? Uh, but what do you think are the possible scenarios when you said of getting rid? What do you think uh, we, as the collective West, as we are labeled, can do? Well, well so yeah. I'm, I'm not advocating that we try and kill uh, Vladimir Putin at all. Um, that's for Russia to decide what to do with their leader. All I'm saying is that, that we should help Ukraine expel the Russian invader from from this country. Now, if that happens, um, that's that, I would have thought, gets Russia to wake up, because what they'll see, they've wasted an enormous amount of money and Russian blood on doing something that was wrong and foolish, and Russia is disgraced, it's far weaker than it was before, and that, I hope, will lead to Russia waking up, and then for Russians to rise up and get rid of him. It's probably more likely that somebody inside the Kremlin will have him killed. But, but it doesn't matter to me um, the particular mechanism. I believe we help Ukraine expel the Russian army from Ukraine, and it, that will have a bad consequence for Vladimir Putin, and quite right soon. I agree, and I'm looking forward to that moment. Slava Ukraine! Arom Slava!